Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Welcome to Technogineer. In this lecture, we will study the mechanical factors in the designing of the transmission line. So, as you know that there are two transmission, two types of transmission line. One is overhead transmission line, and the second one is underground transmission line. So, in this lecture, we will study the mechanical parameters or the factor which are affecting overhead transmission line. As you see in this diagram, we have a tower, and uh, in this tower, we have six cross arms one two three on one side and one two three on the second side then we have the insulator and the after the insulator conductors are attached so the mechanical design is should be set in such a way that it can support for the weight of the uh, of uh, of the mechanical design and the weight of the conductor and it should not create any kind of problem or short circuit faults so in this lecture the topics which we cover are introduction of mechanical design factor affecting mechanical design required clearance type of supporting structure mechanical calculation line conductor and insulator types so first of all the introduction as you know that there are two types of transmission line which are used in the power system one is underground transmission line and the second one is overhead transmission line. In the countries where uh, in underdeveloping countries where uh, where there are not enough financial resources available, then we prefer to implement overhead transmission line instead of underground transmission line because the cost of overhead transmission line is almost fifteen to sixty percent less than the underground transmission line. But the major problem in overhead transmission line is the mechanical design of the system. As uh, as the wire uh, are uh, conductors are used to transmit electricity from one point to another point, but uh, to support these conductor, we need a special mechanical structure so that it 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 should not create any disturbance in the system. So the material chosen for that mechanical structure should be strong enough that it stand all the environmental changes or disturbance. So uh, the conductor and the pole must have safety strength with predetermined safety factor to understand the load due to the line itself and the stress imposed by the ice or the wind. I think you will understand that uh, uh, the capability or the mechanical structure strength should be in, uh, in such a way that if there is an external hurdle or problem act on uh, on the conductor but still these mechanical structures should support the system secondly these include stress up to uh, uh, up by the tension in the conductor at the dead point so these are the tensions which are occur number one is uh, uh, tension in the conductor at the dead point transverse load due to angle in the line vertical stress due to the weight of the conductor vertical component of the conductor in the transmission line so what are the vertical component component in the conductors the major components are insulator transformer capacitors and conductor itself so a large minority of service interruption can be traced to physical failure on the distribution system so these physical fa failures are like uh, broken wire when when a high capacity current transmit in in a special in in the wire then there is a chance of the uh, wire to be broken because when the high current travel to that wire it become heated and uh, this heating effect broke the uh, conductor secondly there is a possibility in when when there is a huge wind pressure then broken poles or broken insulators or insulation damage equipments so these are the major issues in a transmission line and one thing you should know that the majority of these issues are unavoidable so because these issues are dependent on the environment and there is no chance to avoid this but with the help of proper planning and execution we can reduce these problem the if the design and the construction of the various physical part can be withstand with reasonable safety factor not only in normal condition but also in an abnormal condition so when when there is a change a, a, 
rapid change in the environment uh, and or some other problems in the environment but uh, our design should be rigid enough that it should not disturb over the overall efficiency of the system so the factors which are used in designing the mechanical structure of uh, uh, mechanical structure of the power uh, system uh, is character of the root so uh, character of the root mean that the root which will be follow for the transmission of the electricity Second is right of the way that uh, we should have the right to change or the um, to or configure the systems. They say third is the mechanical loading. Fourth is the required grill clearance. And fifth is the type of supporting structure. Six is the grade of the construction. Seven is the conductor. Eight is type of insulator, and nine is joint uses by other utilities i will discuss uh, in detail one by one first is the character of line root so the root for the overhead transmission are usually selected uh, across the country and across the world there are three types of root direct root and direct root transmission as well as to avoid building roads highway and lv low voltage lines but one thing you should clear is that there are two types of line in the transmission system one is low voltage line and the second one is over uh, high voltage line so uh, for the low voltage overhead line uh, are usually uh, run along the street and highways as much as possible in order to reach the customers more easily and to make the line accessible to maintenance However, in the urban and suburban areas, poles are spaced by 100 to 150 feet apart to provide a con convenient point for service um, attachment. While in high voltage transmission line, the span between one pole and other pole is usually more than several hundred feet. So, uh, <laughs> Uh, by these two statements you will understand that in the low voltage transmission line the span between one pole and other pole is almost 100 to 150 feet but in the high voltage line this increase in hundreds of feet so the line location asks uh, task required judgment experience and skills not only in minimizing the cost of row and construction but also in providing con uh, convenience in maintenance and illuminating some possible operational bottleneck that might that might occur in the future so experience and judgment and finally the skill are very important uh, to design the mechanical structure of the uh, to design or to uh, formulate the root of mm, the transmission line <laughs> now in general the factor affecting the length uh, the length of a span are as follow character of the root number two proper clearance between the conductor number three excessive tension under maximum load number four structured uh, uh, adequate to carry additional load so these are the primary four factors which should we should consider in order to define the root of the transmission line it is usually not recommended especially in the mountain country or in heavily populated area to choose a direct route or try to locate the line or uh, on the long tangent so the second point is right of uh, right of way in general uh, rather than purchasing the uh, way or the uh, the land for the transmission line we usually use uh, we uh, usually create a permanent easement contract uh, in uh, with the owner to permit the necessary right to the cons uh, to construct and operate the line but keeping ownership and use of the land the easement secure uh, must uh, stip, uh, stipulate the following number one permission to build all sporting structure so the main contract should have these uh, permissions number one 
is that the owner should allow the engineers to build all the spotting subjects. Number two, the owner gave permission for a mean of access to each spotting structure. Number three, permit, uh, permission to clear all trees and br uh, brush, uh, uh, brush over a width of at least 10 feet uh, larger than the, uh, the spread of the conductor in order to allow sufficient working space for the construction. Number four, permission to remove all trees which might violate the minimum requirement to con the conductor if they were to fall. Number four, permission to remove all trees which might violate the minimum required clearance to the conductor if the conductor were to swing out under maximum weight. So uh, if you see that there are three points where, where we get permission to clear the trees or the bushes uh, because uh, if, the, if the tree grow toward the direction of the transmission line then there is a chance of short circuit or creating some fault in the transmission line. So the last point is the permission to remove all obstacles for example building lumber piles, uh, hay, hay stake which might cause a fire. This is the same thing that when we take land, we don't purchase it physically. We take it on the cry. But we sign a contract with the vendor's vendor contract with the land owner. The land owner has basically a property. But it's only this that it gets different kind of permissions. That if he has to use some sporting material or adjustment, तो सारी सारी परमिशन ऑनर दे देता है मेजर प्रॉब्लम क्या होती है कि रिमोट एरियाज में जब हम साइट इंस्टॉल करते हैं तो उधर ट्रीज वगैरह लग जाते हैं अगर वो ट्रीज ट्रांसमिशन लाइन के नीचे है और चांसेस हैं कि वो ट्रांसमिशन लाइन को डिस्टर्ब करेगा तो नॉर्मली हम उन ट्रीज को काट देते हैं इवन हम उन ट्रीज को जिसमें चांस होता है कि अगर मेरी ट्रांसमिशन लाइन हो आके प्रेशर की वजह से स्विंग करना शुरू हो जाए तो हम कहते हैं कि कोई भी ऐसा चांस ना हो कि ये जो है ये किसी भी ऐसे मटेरियल के साथ कनेक्ट हो और इसके अंदर शॉर्ट सर्किट एक्ट कर सके तो फिर क्या करते हैं कि हम कहते हैं कि ऐसे درخت या ऐसे प्लांट्स जो उस पॉइंट से कुछ दूर हैं बट फिर भी लेकिन ये कि अगर कोई मैकेनिकल फोर्स एक्ट करती है तो वो उस पॉइंट को भी टच कर देंगे तो इस केस में हम उन ट्रीज और उन बुशेस को भी क्लिप कर देते हैं तो ये राइट ऑफ द वे हमारे पास आ जाता है फिर उसके बाद आता है मैकेनिकल लोडिंग द टर्म मैकेनिकल लोडिंग रेफर टू एन एक्सटर्नल कंडीशन दैट प्रोड्यूस मैकेनिकल स्ट्रेस इन द कंडक्टर एंड सपोर्ट दैट इज पोल और द टर्म so the mechanical loading also include the weight of the conductor, structure themselves, structure are subjected to vertical and horizontal load. Now the vertical load include the dead weight of the equipment such as cross arm. So the weight of the cross arm is very important. Second is the insulator, weight of the insulator is important. Third is the conductor transform. Uh, Transformer. So these are the three cross arm insulator and the conductor transformer. It also include ice and slow uh, snow clinging on the structure and its effect. So while designing the mechanical structure we should consider many parameters and we should consider that, that the pole should have sufficient power to handle these kind of issues. So in general the following clearance need to be considered. Number one ground clearance. So the distance from the ground to the first conductor should be clear enough and there should be no nothing in between them. Then tracks uh, or the routes which are used for the transmission of uh, these cables. Number three buildings. If there is some building over the near the transmission line we will adjust its position so that it cannot harm or create any problem to uh, to the building users then we should consider the uh, trees uh, we should avoid uh, trees to be cut but if there is some problem when there, when there is a chance to uh, 
for uh, for the wire to touch the tree then we need to trim that tree third important thing is conductor and the structure of uh, another uh, line other conductor on the same structure so uh, uh, in the clearance between the conductor to conductor or conductor to another line is very important so the structure itself uh, gave wire and uh, guy wire and other equipment on the structure and the edge of the row so this is some uh, there are some tables in which you can see the horizontal clearance and then the vertical clearance if you see these are the parameters uh, in feet if there is uh, voltage is 0 to 750 volt and uh, uh, we need some clearance to the wall and the projection then the clearance should be at least 5 feet away similarly we have to unguard un windows uh, to uh, balconies so vertical clearance values are gradually changing according to the requirement the second is uh, uh, minimum vertical clearance of the conductor about the previous one is uh, clearance of the conductor passing by but not attached to the building the, this one is minimum vertical clearance of the conductor above ground on the ray so this is vertical clearance so vertical for the vertical clearance for 0 to 750 volt the number of feet should be 27 feet and so on now the sporting structure there are four different types of sporting structure which are used in uh, commonly used number one is wooden pole number two is rcc or concrete poles number three is steel poles and number four is aluminium pole so each of these poles have its own advantages and disadvantages like uh, wooden poles are commonly used because uh, the material uh, handling is very easy uh, however concrete poles reinforced with the steel have been used for street light because of their neat appearance but in high voltage application we usually use steel poles or aluminium poles because uh, uh, because we need to develop a tower with a with a very uh, we need to develop uh, a tower with uh, with with a very long height so if the tower strength is weak then there is a chance uh, to create some distraction so the quality of the pole is should be very high so these are some poles like this is a wooden pole and it is called a type pole and this is also a wooden pole and it is called h type pole and if you see that there are uh, in, in the both side of the pole on the right side and in the left side there are three connections so in, uh, that means that double circuit will be used in these kind of faults this is another type of fault this is uh, the structure is usually uh, rcc base or concrete base this is for uh, uh, a single three phase line and this is for double three phase line so these are different types of poles then uh, if you see that the typical pole design used in distribution system like uh, the a figure indicate that it is a pole top that uh, two mm, two phases are connected in the right and the left and the third phase in at the top the second is two arm um, uh, uh, and the two phases are connected from at the top and the third phase in in the next row third one is the single arm then uh, it shows that it has single arm then uh, all the phases are connected over here fourth one is line arm and the fifth one is side arm so the, these are the different types of poles which are used for the transmission and uh, in typical column design is like this one uh, that uh, that this is wishbone design this is unbrassed uh ups webbed arm um, this is horizontal this is horizontal lines in post and this is braced horizontal line uh, horizontal line so these are different types of uh, connections which are available in these poles 
if you see this is a different uh, structure of different poles number one is unbraced edge frame number two is b frame with wood number three is edge frame with uh, सब कनेक्ट करने के भी डिफरेंट तरीके हैं पहला तरीका क्या है फुल कंक्रीट सेटिंग यानी कि इसमें पूरी कंक्रीट की सेटिंग करके उस पोल को अटैच कर दिया जाता है सेकंड जो है वो है है कंक्रीट सेटिंग इसमें स्पेशल कंक्रीट सेटिंग्स के साथ इसको अटैच किया जाता है तीसरी है क्रश्ड स्टोन सेटिंग नंबर फोर्थ है प्लेन अर्थ सेटिंग नंबर फिफ्थ पे है हील एंड ब्रेस्ट कंक्रीट ब्लॉक्स इफ यू सी दिस इज दिस इज हील एंड ब्रेस्ट हील ब्लॉक एंड फॉर दिस वन इफ यू सी इट इट इज प्लेन अर्थ सेटिंग एंड द लास्ट वन इज बोल्टेड टिम्बर सेटिंग सो दीज आर द डिफरेंट सेटिंग्स अंडर द ग्राउंड व्हिच आर यूज टू सपोर्ट द पिलर एंड to uh, to uh, जब डिफरेंट किस्म की रैपिड इन्वायरमेंटल कंडीशन आती है या हार्श इन्वायरमेंट आ जाता है तो हमारी फाउंडेशन इतनी स्ट्रॉन्ग होनी चाहिए कि ये जो पोल है ये किसी भी इन्वायरमेंट पे ये डिस्टर्ब ना हो डैमेज ना हो फिर जो मेजर प्रॉपर्टीज हैं कंडक्टर की वो कुछ ये चार हैं नंबर वन फॉर द कंडक्टर द कंडक्टर हैज़ हाई इलेक्ट्रिक कंडक्टिविटी कंडक्टिविटी सेकेंड वन इज़ हाई टेंसाइल स्ट्रेंथ इन ऑर्डर टू विद स्टैंड विद मैकेनिकल स्ट्रेंथ नंबर थ्री लो कॉस्ट सो दैट इट कैन बी यूज फॉर द लॉन्ग डिस्टेंस नंबर फोर लो स्पेसिफिक ग्रेविटी सो दैट द वेट पर यूनिट वॉल्यूम इज स्मॉल सो दीज आर द फोर पैरामीटर विच शूड कंसिडर इन माइंड बाइल सेलेक्टिंग द कंडक्टर so there are different types of conductor which are used in the transmission num line number 1 is copper number 2 is aluminium number 3 is steel core aluminium number 4 is gal galvanized steel and number 5 is cadmium copper so, uh, copper is basically an ideal material which are used uh, uh, is conduction properties that it is if it is uh, uh, pure then the cha then its conduction is outstanding so in it is the best mm, conductor in the market but uh, the problem is that it is it its availability is lesser secondly its cost is very high so the chances to use copper uh, would be minimum in that uh, in for the short distance we use copper wire for but for the long distance we do not use copper wire we prefer to have aluminum wire aluminum is comparatively cheap its uh, weight is also less than the Mm, uh, uh, less than the copper but its conduction quality is that it is uh, its conductivity is 60% than that of the copper but if we increase the cross sectional area then its conduction will be increased in short we can say that uh, in the if we compare aluminum with copper and uh, the current carrying capacity capability is also same uh, then uh, then uh, you will understand that Uh, the copper uh, is one point uh, six. Uh, the aluminium diameter is one point two six times greater than the copper diameter. Secondly, the specific gravity of the aluminium is lower than that of the copper. Therefore, an aluminium conductor has almost one half the weight of the equivalent copper conductor. Third, aluminium conductor being light is liable to great swing, and hence large cross arms are required. number 4 due to the low tensile strength and high coefficient of expansion of the aluminum the sag is greater in aluminum conductor
ਉਸਦਾ ਐਲਮੀਨੀਅਮ ਬਾਹਰ ਨੰਬਰ 4th ਇਜ਼ ਗੈਲਵਨਾਈਜ਼ਡ ਸਟੀਲ ਸੋ ਗੈਲਵਨਾਈਜ਼ਡ ਸਟੀਲ ਹੈਜ਼ ਵੈਰੀ ਹਾਈ ਟੈਂਸਰਲਸ ਐਂਡ ਥੇਰਫੋਰ ਗੈਲਵਨਾਈਜ਼ਡ ਸਟੀਲ ਕੰਡਕਟਰ ਕੈਨ ਬੀ ਯੂਜ਼ਡ ਫੋਰ ਐਕਸਟ੍ਰੀਮਲੀ ਲੌਂਗ ਸਪੈਨ ਫੋਰ ਸ਼ਾਰਟ ਲਾਈਨਸ ਸੈਕਸ਼ਨ ਐਕਸਪੋਜ਼ਡ ਟੂ ਐਬਨੋਰਮਲ ਹਾਈ ਸਟ੍ਰੈਸ ਡਿਊ ਟੂ ਦਾ ਕਲਾਈਮੈਟਿਕ ਚੇਂਜ they have been found very suitable in the rural area where the cheapness is the main consideration number 5 one is cadmium copper cadmium here we use a um, alloy of the uh, copper and uh, we develop an alloy of the copper with the cadmium uh, an addition of 1 or 2% of the cadmium to the copper increase the tensile strength by 50% and the conductivity is only reduced by 15% below uh, that of the pure copper therefore cadmium copper con- conductor can uh, be useful for ex- exceptionally long span however due to high cost of the cadmium such conductor will be e- economical only for the line of small cross section area where the cost of the conductor material is com- be, uh, comparatively less compared to the other uh, material now the insulators you already study the insulator uh, insulators are used to separate the conductor with the tower so the bas- basic quality of the insulator is to pro- provide proper insulation so that the no current will be traveled from the uh, from the insulator to the tower so uh, there are few properties of the insulator number 1 it's a high it should have high mechanical strength number 2 it should uh, have high electrical resistance number 3 electric uh, high relative pro- uh, proximity of the insulator material in other uh, that dielectric strength is high number 4 is the insulator material should be non porous free from the impurity and cracks otherwise the permittivity will be low and the fifth one is high ratio of punctures and to flash over so these are five parameters by which we will select the insulator the common type of insulator which are used in the power system is bin type insulator suspension type insulator and strain type insulator mm. and you already study different types of the insulator so if you want to study then you can consult with the previous lecture thank you jazakallah hopefully you will understand the basic concept of the mechanical design of the power system thank you jazakallah